Hi, my name is Oliver Bear, and I'm one of the blockchain analysts here at SVK Crypto. Today's video is going to be discussing the differences, but also some of the similarities between EOS and Tron, two third generation blockchain protocols that were launched in June of last year. We're going to break this video down into some segments so it's better to understand, those segments being consensus algorithms, funding, developer tools, resource allocation, on-chain governance, and finally, and most importantly, real-world performance. So let's get into it. Okay, so our first segment is consensus mechanisms. EOS and Tron have a similar consensus mechanism known as DPoS or Delegated Proof of Stake. EOS has half second block times, Tron has three second block times. Tron has 27 block producers, EOS has 21. For us, the key takeaways here is that developers and projects will prefer to use EOS for its half second block times, which produce much more responsive applications. The difference in finality time between one and three minutes is in the real world fairly trivial. Although from all the improvements that are going on at block one, we know that these figures will not stay static and I'm sure the finality times will come down over time. Number two is funding. We believe that funding is very important in order to make sure that the smart contracting platform of your choice maintains its edge over time. Both these protocols raised money in an ICO. Tron raised 70 million in their ICO and EOS or Block One raised 4.2 billion in their year long ICO. Because they both use DPoS or Delegated Proof of Stake as their consensus mechanism, part of their distributed nature comes from how dispersed the token supply is which is why Block One opted for a year-long ICO so they can get their tokens in the hands of as many unique token holders as possible. We can see this in the token supply. The Tron Foundation own roughly 35% of the total supply right now, whereas Block One own 10%. So in terms of a delegated proof of state network, Tron is significantly more centralized than EOS is. Furthermore, because of the superior capitalization of Block One, they've been able to really advance the protocol in many different verticals all at the same time. And we can see this from the bi-weekly updates we get from the Block One development team. Moving on to the developer tools. Developers are one of the most important stakeholders in any smart contracting platform network. They'll ultimately be the ones that deliver the killer applications of the future. Tron borrowed from Ethereum and they used the Ethereum virtual machine. The Ethereum virtual machine is programmed in Solidity, which is a variant of JavaScript. This is a less supported language and the libraries are still being built. It's also a legacy language. We even see this from the Ethereum foundation themselves, who are moving away from their EVM technology to something more modern, more modern like what EOS is using, which is WebAssembly. WebAssembly can be compiled to from many different languages. Officially, EOS supports C++ from the beginning. The idea here is that there are many, many programmers out there who already know C++ and if we can support C++ from the beginning, we can entice them into our network to build decentralized applications that run on the EOS network. Topic four is resource allocation. Resource allocation is super important to both users and developers because it's the way they're able to access the network's bandwidth and resources. Both EOS and Tron use a staking model, which means if you stake a certain number of tokens, you'll receive a certain amount of bandwidth. So if you stake 1% of the EOS total token supply, you'll receive 1% of the EOS network's bandwidth. Tron currently offers free accounts to its users, whilst EOS is still on a paid version, and Tron offers each user 5,000 bandwidth points a day, which equates to approximately 25 free transactions. These resource models are always changing and are, are a hot topic uh, of debate in the EOS community and in the Tron community. However, from our perspective, we think that the most effective resource allocation will be one where the onerous can be put on the smart contract or the DAP to pay for all transactions on behalf of its users so the users who are using those uh, decentralized applications have a completely frictionless experience. Next up is on-chain governance. Both EOS and Tron have some degree of on-chain governance. Because they're both delegated proof-of-stake networks, they require each token holder to be able to vote 
for different block producers. So they both tick that category of voting for various different block producers that the user sees fit. However, where EOS excels is it enables any token holder to propose a change to the network, have a referendum. If that has enough support, it can be voted in by 15 out of the 21 block producers. Currently on Tron, that isn't possible and the only uh, entities who can propose a change are the elected block producers. Lastly and most importantly is real world performance. The numbers you can see on the screen were taken from the end of 2018 and they really show EOS's dominance. EOS did in the, in the last six months of the year three and a half billion dollars in transactional volume whilst Tron did just over 600 million. But even if you look at Ethereum, which was live for the full 12 months of that year, they did around $2.6 billion in transactional volume. We believe this is one of the advantages of third generation blockchains, really showing their ability to scale. And we also believe that in the next six months or next 12 months, we'll see even greater applications being launched that are more complex, more engaging, and have more and more users as well. So what does this all really mean? Obviously these numbers are subject to change as development goes on. And with the open source nature of technology that we live in today, great technological advancements can be borrowed and implemented in other platforms. So your technology edge is only ever short lived. What makes your platform defensible and future proof is the network effects you can drive to it. That's bringing users on board and more importantly, bringing killer applications on board to your platform. That's what will make it future-proof. That's what we believe EOS brings to the table. And that's why we believe EOS is in a great position to remain one of the most performant and used smart contracting platforms of the future. Great, well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you want to learn more about the EOS versus Tron article, we wrote a Medium post, which will be linked in the description below. If you want to keep up with everything we're doing here at SVK Crypto, please subscribe and hit the bell notification so you're always kept up to date with our latest videos. And we'd love to hear more about what your thoughts were on this video, so please leave a comment down below as well. Thank you so much for watching.